Hey guys, welcome to session number 3 of Engineering Research Methods, Inch 851. My name is Asim Kulkarni and my topic is Mechanics of Electrified Vehicle Contact Wire Systems. The first question that comes to our mind is what does it mean? Well, it includes the study, a study of how electrified trains or any electrified vehicle, how they work. But secondly, we have to tackle what all losses are incurred in this process and ultimately what we can do to improve these losses or modify them. Why do we need to study this? Well, railways as we know are extremely important. In what all fields? We have it in the industry. We can see that railways form the backbone of the, of the industrialization process of any state. Secondly, and most importantly, is the other people. These railways work for the people. Now, railways have been a part of the transportation for the past 300 years and it is expected that they are convenient and they are extremely comfortable. Great. Now how do railways work? We all have been uh, travelling by railways for a very long time. Here is a typical scenario of a railway track. In this left hand side corner you can see a generator. The generator generates electricity and it transfers it to the wires, conducting wires. Now these conducting wires are called catenaries. Now, the catenaries are supported by support towers. The catenaries along with the support towers form the overhead line. The train collects current from these overhead lines and it powers itself to locomote. Looking into detail, this structure that you can see in the middle of the screen is the pantograph. And these wires, the overhead lines, are the catenaries. Now the current from the generators is carried into the catenaries and the pantograph has arrangements of its own to collect this current. Now, we have to, uh, you know, we have to bear in mind that these catenaries are open wires. They conduct extremely high voltages of electricity. Well, that is one of the reasons we usually find this board around all the railway stations. Talking of current collection, this is an ideal pantograph. If you have a closer look at the head, we can see these lines. These are copper copper strips. Now copper is a very good conductor of electricity. When copper comes in contact with the catenary, it absorbs maximum, almost 98% of the current that the catenary is carrying. Now as I said, catenary has extremely high voltages. There are some situations wherein the contact between the pantograph and the catenary can break. In these situations, even when the contact has broken, the catenary, due to the high voltage, tends to jump the electrified uh, signals. Well, that results in sparking, or in technical language, as we call it, arcing. Now, why arcing is extremely undesirable? Well, that's because arcing forms extreme temperatures, which happen to destroy the copper, or maybe melt the copper strips. This comes down, uh, you have to come down to the main research question that why are we doing this? Why do we need to study? Well, we need to know that uh, how we can make these trains work efficiently. In other words, uh, how can we improve the current collection quality from the catenary to the pantograph? More precisely, how do we ensure that the contact between the catenary and the pantograph is, is uh, kept constant? There are some experiments that the researchers have been doing since a very long time. Here are some of the solutions that they have suggested. Now here is a typical catenary system. What the researchers say is that due to the weight, the, the catenary tends to sag. Sagging, it results in pantograph uh, contact breakage. So the obvious solution for this is to increase the catenary stiffness. When you increase the catenary stiffness, it results in physical damage to the pantograph. Definitely not a desirable solution. Well, this takes us to increasing uh, the stiffness or, or rigidity, we can call of the droppers. We can introduce a system, uh, a system wires. But all these systems tend to be more expensive than the original system. We can also make changes in the pantograph as well. Here in this case, we have a pantograph. The researchers have added motors and actuators to this pantograph so that the pantograph senses if there is going to be a contact breakage or not. Since these include sensors and actuators and muscles, definitely the system is extremely expensive and it never made it to market. 
Then we can also alter some of the parameters that the pantograph has. We can change the weight of the head. We can probably add more number of arms. We can um, increase the surface area of contact, and so on. But all these change of parameters include a change in the original design of the pantograph, which again tends to be extremely expensive. So while I was researching these um, uh, researchers' experiments, well, yeah, so there were some anomalies that we found out. The main one, there was a root cause analysis which was missing, which made uh, a, a lot of difference. Secondly, the solutions, they, they were extremely component specific and not problem specific. Like for example, if there is a wire sag, then the researchers will talk about how to stiffen the wire instead of locating uh, or identifying the source. And the third one, the solutions did not exactly adapt to all the working scenarios of the railway. So what does my research design do? Well, my research design is based on the principle of root cause analysis. So we start from the basic, which are from the tracks. We know that the tracks are not perfect. So the tracks are irregular. The train speeds are extremely high. So that results in vibrations. So these vibrations we know are transferable. They are transferred to the train body and then to the rooftop. We know that the, on the rooftop, we have the category and pandora arrangement. So they definitely happen to affect the catenary and pandora arrangement. The contact might break. It is proven that if these vibrations affect the catenary and the pandora arrangement, the uh, current collection quality reduces to 70%. So based on all these researches and facts, we can definitely conclude that vibrations have a heavy influence on the pantograph and catenary area. So how do we go about our research? Well, first we make a model of the catenary and pantograph. Then we subject this model to real-time stress scenarios. The actual ones that the actual railway encounters, those scenarios. But from these scenarios or the results of these scenarios, we uh, identify vibration points, different sources of vibration. Now this is where we identify them and we make sure that we introduce vibration isolators to these points. After doing that, we retest them again and we on the results. These are some of the vibration isolators that can be used. So what good does it do to the system? Well, first and foremost, since there are no vibrations, we know that the component life would definitely be longer. Secondly, journey would be extremely comfortable since there are no vibrations. There are no new parts in this particular system. So manufacture, we will be keeping the original design intact. Moreover, there are no new parts, so the manufacturing cost is extremely unified. And yes, most importantly, it can be applied to all the scenarios, all the working scenarios. There are some cons as well. Well, this research experiment in general is expensive. And um, there, there is going to be some extra effort to manage the weight of the extra components or the new components that are going to be uploaded on the rooftop. Before I conclude, I would like to say that um, this research is not an exact solution of um, the problem that I stated. However, it definitely forms a foundation. If in case we are to use the different solutions of researchers along with this, definitely I, I believe this research will be of help. Thank you so much for your time.